Over the last 10 days, I built the same store with Medusa, Sailor, and Venger to find the best open source headless e-commerce platform. And in this video, I'm going to take you through my experience and by the end, you'll know what to expect when getting started, best fit for your project, the pros, cons, and ranking based on a four-point criteria. To keep things fair, I'll be building an e-commerce store for our fictional jewelry brand, giving us a clear benchmark to compare each platform. So here's my judging criteria. Number one, customizability. How flexible is it? Number two, developer experience. How smooth is it to build with? Number three, integration. How well does it connect with other tools? Finally, self-hosting. How easy is it to manage on your own? I started off this experiment with the Medusa project and installation was really straightforward. I was able to get everything up and running within a couple of minutes. If you've worked with Docker before, this really shouldn't be an issue. To be transparent, I have worked with Medusa GS before for my custom e-commerce development agency, Theorosix Technologies. But for this experiment, I'll keep everything as unbiased as possible and approach it like it's my first time. Now that I have the dashboard running, I must say the Medusa UL looks really great. It has that Shopify feel, but in an open source platform. I started by uploading my products using the bulk product upload option, and I had to give it a few tries, but eventually I got the products uploaded. If you have more complex data structures for your product, it will likely be easier just to create a custom script to be able to upload them. With the products uploaded, my next step was to integrate Sandy CMS. Following the documentation, I created a custom sync module that triggers a product sync whenever my products are created, updated, or deleted. And to be totally honest, with Sandy CMS, there was an exact step-by-step -step guide on how to integrate Sandy CMS. But now the real test was, could I do this with something totally custom, like a product swatches module? So I dove into the documentation and followed everything to the T. And I had to really review and understand the concepts of modules, workflows, and links to really understand the ins and outs of the platform. It definitely wasn't easy, but I got it done. Now I can add either an image or a color swatch to my product options. Finally, it was time to deploy to Railway. And deployment is a concern for many people looking to work with Medusa. But in my case, I found this to be really straightforward and I had everything up and running within a few minutes. Overall, Medusa is highly flexible and you can build almost any commerce scenario that you can imagine. The dashboard UI looks super production ready and the community is second to none. But don't expect to be an expert on Medusa overnight. It will take time, patience and lots of hands-on work to really understand it. Before shipping into production, you will likely have to add a few different missing pieces. For example, the base Medusa project doesn't have an option for product variant images or basic analytics, which is a must for almost all e-commerce stores. Here are my Medusa ratings. Customization, 8 out of 10. Medusa is really easy to customize. The dashboard UI is super intuitive and easy to work with, but you will have to learn the ins and outs of the platform to really make it flexible. Developer experience, 9 out of 10. The docs are really well organized and easy to follow. Plus, the AI chatbot on the Medusa website is an absolute game changer. Integrations, 9 out of 10. Medusa works really well and combines easily with third-party applications. You can build your custom workflows and combine it with core services to really make it work for your needs. Self-hosting, 8 out of 10. In my experience, deploying to Railway was really straightforward. But I also think the documentation on self-hosting can be improved, perhaps to include more guides and documentation for specific platforms. Now it was time for Venger. I documented this entire experiment on my LinkedIn and X accounts. And before I kicked off the Venger portion, mm -hmm. Michael from Venger reached out to me, encouraging me to try the new React-based admin dashboard, which I was really excited about. Similar to Medusa, the installation process was really straightforward. And since I opted to use the new React-based admin dashboard, I didn't need to take a couple extra steps to get everything up and running. Compared to the older Angular-based dashboard, the React dashboard is a step up in design and usability. It simply looks better and feels much better. Now that I have my dashboard up and running, it was time to upload my products. Venger doesn't have an option to be able to upload your products directly from the dashboard UI but it does have a populate function which you can use to be able to create your own script to upload your products. After uploading my products, I began with the Sandy CMS integration. As with Medusa, you will have to spend time going through the documentation and learning the concepts to really get a handle of the platform. 
I got the Sandy Sync plugin up and running, and now you can either sync the products manually or it's synced automatically whenever a product is created, updated, or deleted. After that, I began with the product swatches plugin. This followed a similar path to the Sandy CMS integration. I created a module and then a workflow to handle product swatches. I also created a UI component so people can easily add swatches through the dashboard UI. Finally, it was time to deploy to Railway. And to be honest, this was a little bit more confusing than I had imagined, mainly because I was using the new React-based admin dashboard. Again, the React-based admin dashboard is still a release candidate. So the documentation on this actually was not that great. So I had to go through the Discord server messages to find the missing pieces, but eventually I got everything up and running. And the deployment process is very similar to Medusa. You have a server instance which takes care of APIs and the dashboard. And then you have a worker instance which takes care of background tasks like jobs and other queued tasks. Overall, Venture is really flexible and it allows you to build end-to-end -end customizations with tools you're already familiar with like Shatsian UI and the Tanstack ecosystem. Similar to Medusa, there is definitely a learning curve. Don't expect to know everything in a couple of days or even a week. You will have to spend time going through the documentation and really learning the concepts. But once you have the hang of it, Venture allows you to build almost any commerce scenario that you can imagine. Now let's talk about the React-based dashboard. As I mentioned earlier, it's a big step up from the Angular-based dashboard, but some areas do still feel incomplete or missing, which makes it clear that this is still in development. For example, I wanted to be able to add a new product option once the product has been published, but there was no way to do this through the React dashboard. For example, in the previous Angular-based dashboard, you could easily do this under the Product Variance tab by adding in your option and the values. Now, Vendor provides a lot of things out of the box. You get things like facets for filtering, product variant images, and even basic analytics, all without needing to install additional plugins. So here are my Venture ratings. Customizations, 8 out of 10. Venger is super flexible and allows you to build almost any commerce scenario just the way you want it. With plugins, GraphQL, Shatsyn UI, and the Tanstack ecosystem, you can go really deep. Developer experience, 7 out of 10. The platform feels modern, and the React-based admin dashboard is still maturing, so the docs aren't quite there yet. Integrations, 9 out of 10. I believe this is Venger's strongest area with the GraphQL first design. You can easily integrate with other external APIs and create your custom workflows. Self-hosting, 7 out of 10. Running the platform on Railway works really well once you figure out the missing pieces. Now, the documentation on the React-based dashboard is still thin, so you will have to do a little bit of digging through Discord to be able to get your answers. Now, Sailor is a little bit different than the first two platforms. With Medusa and Venture, your custom logic and extensions live directly inside of your e-commerce platform. They are bundled and shipped together as one service. But with Sailor, you build a separate app for your custom logic and then connect it back into the platform. Your Sailor core and your applications are deployed and shipped separately. Now there's pros and cons to this. With Medusa and Venture, you get a deeper integration because you have full control over your core commerce services. With Sailor, the extensions operate as separate entities. You can build the extensions on your favorite React-based framework and then connect it back into the core Sailor platform using GraphQL. Unless you fork the project, you won't have access to any of the core commerce services of Sailor, and with the extensions, you will experience some latency as you are communicating over the web with your extensions, rather than internally in the case of Medusa and Venture. I was able to build the Sandy Sync and the product swatches functionality really easily, as I'm already working with tools that I'm familiar with. Therefore, there's a lot less of a learning curve compared to Medusa and Venture. You can simply build out the UI and then connect it back to the Sailor platform using GraphQL. Now it's time to deploy it. And I needed three separate deployments to be able to get the platform up and running. First of all, deploying the Sailor platform to Railway. And to be quite honest, this wasn't great. The documentation on this was really thin. So I had to rely on a lot of trial and error to get everything up and running. After that, I deployed my custom extension and my storefront to Vercel, which was really straightforward. With Sailor, it's relatively easy to build a custom e-commerce platform without really having to dig into the ins and outs of a platform as you would have to with Medusa and Venture. 
The dashboard looks really well put together. The whole platform looks really clean. And overall, everything feels really production ready. But the big downside is the customizability. Your extensions and your custom logic never really become a part of your core commerce platform, which is a big turnoff. For example, the custom routes and extensions are just basic iframe embeds, and you don't really have full control over your core commerce platform. So here are my final ratings. Customizations, 6 out of 10. Customizations are limited in Sailor, and since your custom logic and extensions live outside of the core platform, you don't really get that deep control over your platform, such as with Medusa or Avenger. Developer experience, 8 out of 10. Building extensions on Sailor is really straightforward since you're working with tools and frameworks that you're already familiar with, but I do feel like the documentation can be a little bit more clearer in certain instances. Integrations, 9 out of 10, thanks to the GraphQL first design. Integrating with third-party APIs is really straightforward, and you can pretty much integrate with any service you'd like. Self-hosting, 7 out of 10. Self-hosting is doable with Sailor, but the documentation on it isn't great, and you will have to host a bunch of different services separately, which just adds complexity. So to conclude, here are the final results. So what do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Leave a comment down below and make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content.